All right, everybody. Uh, I just thought I'd take a video because why not? You know, maybe you don't want to stare at slides anymore. Uh, but basically, next we're going to talk about Latin American independence. So when I say Latin America, we're basically talking about everything Mexico down, right? So Mexico is part of North America, but then you have Central America and South America involved with that. Sometimes even the Caribbean. Um, that is all Latin America. And we're going to talk about just things really falling apart for Spain. So this information will also be on the Google slide slides that are within this Nearpod as well. Um, so don't like feel like, you know, I still want you to read through it, but it shouldn't feel incredibly new, I suppose is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, so you read through that information still, even after you watch this video. So what is going on with Spain's empire. Well, we already saw with Florida that things aren't going well. And this is actually kind of going on at the same time, so I'm sorry for the order there, but um, in 1810, uh, Mexico decides to basically starts the ball rolling on declaring independence. And there's a whole bunch of interesting stories there. The, their war of independence takes 11 years, which is quite a long time to be fighting a war of independence. And it's kind of hard for Spain to fight at that time because it actually is mostly under control of Napoleon and the French army. So, yes, it's true. The French Revolution and Napoleon are coming into American history again. It's amazing how this keeps happening. Um, it was really the thing that was going on in the world at the time. I know I told my class that, uh, you know, America is kind of a sideshow for this part of history for a lot of it. Well, Monroe Doctrine is a part of that not being true anymore. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So anyway... Um, Basically, when your country's invaded, it's hard to have colonies. <laughs> you know, you're not really too concerned about that when you're literally trying to push a foreign power out of your own country. So uh, that's part one of why it would be difficult for Spain to hold on to Central and South America. The other reason is obviously the fact that as someone living in the colonies, it really makes Spain look pretty darn weak if they can't even control their own uh, country and they're trying to tell you what to do and you're not getting self-government. So all these areas, I'm going to divide up into like four areas and this is going to go real quick. So don't get like intimidated by this. Um, you have Mexico, then you have the northern part of South America, which is now like Venezuela and Colombia would be the two big ones, but also Peru, Ecuador, and uh, Panama and Central America. And then you have the southern part, Argentina, Chile. Yes, I know I'm leaving countries out. Um, and they are still going to be seen. You're going to see a map where you can see all those. Um, so that's part two and three. And then part four is Brazil. So in Mexico, you have that really long, drawn-out war of independence. Um, and I believe it was Father Hidalgo, let me consult my notes here, who really got that going. Yep. So he is a priest, and he really starts the Mexican War of Independence, and it takes others to finish it. It falls apart. Mexico back then, just so you know, includes what is today Mexico and also includes about a third, or sorry, is a third bigger because it also includes what's now the Southwest United States, okay? Everything from Texas to California and whatever's in between. Um, so anyway, Mexico gains its independence. That northern part of um, South America, so Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and going up into Central America, gains its independence under a guy named Simon Bolivar, who tries to be, this is what's so interesting to me, he tries to be the Latin American George Washington, and he has a lot of things about himself that might even make that possible, but no one else wants that. <laughs> so this is difference number one, big difference between Latin America and North America, because we both started as colonies, declaring independence, but a big difference is that a lot of those countries feel more strongly that they didn't want to be united. Um, there are geographic and social region reasons for that. There's lots more mountains dividing these different entities. Um, and that meant that over hundreds of years, because again, the Spanish American colonies are going to be a lot older than the American colonies. Remember that when um, we're setting up Jamestown that will become Virginia, right? Cuba has already been around for 100 years as a Spanish colony. So it's just much older, and that means that there's a lot more history of people hating each other and not wanting to be united. So poor Simon Bolivar wanted to make basically United States of South America. He called it Gran Colombia. 
And there's my terrible Spanish accent. I never took any Spanish, so that was terrible. But anyway, um, no one agreed with that. <laughs> no one wanted that. And so he's running around for a big chunk of his life putting out fires that no one wants him to put out. Um, and that's very interesting. If you want to learn more about it, Latin American Revolution is super interesting. Got a cool 30-hour podcast on it. In the south, in the south, in what would become Argentina and Chile, you have a guy named Jose de San Martin, who, again, is kind of like their version of George Washington. Uh, he wasn't as self-aware because Simon Bolivar literally wanted to be the South American George Washington. He was George Washington is someone he looked up to. Jose de San Martin is much more into just making sure we get independence, and once the political stuff kind of gets involved, he doesn't like that. Um, so that happens there. Then Brazil is a huge chunk of South America that's actually owned by Portugal. Uh, and again, Portugal gets partially gets invaded by Napoleon's armies. Wow, it keeps coming up. And when that happens, their whole royal family flees to Brazil. <laughs> so I think it's, I think, I hate to say only ever, but I think it is the only case you'll really find in history where a colony is basically ruling over the home country because the um, royal family lives there for quite some time, for like a decade. And when they try and go back to Portugal and reassert control over Port or Brazil from Portugal, essentially they grab a prince and they use him to say, hey, I'm going to set up an empire of Brazil because we shouldn't be run by Portugal. We've been running ourselves and we even ran Portugal from here. So it's kind of wild. Again, interesting moment in history, probably the only, probably, the only time a colony has run its mother country um, and given refuge like that to its, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, royal family. You can always find exceptions in history, so I hate to say only. Um, so yeah, those are the big things. You got four sections there. I'm just saying this so that I don't have to say it over the slide. Mexico gains its independence. That's going to be pretty close to the American border. Central and South America, right? That's that Simone Bolivar wants to be George Washington. South America, Jose de San Martin, and then in Port, uh, Brazil, a little different situation. But why does all this matter? Well, you have all these independent countries that are very much divided. There are many attempts by Spain to kind of reconquer these areas, and there's a thought that if Spain ever, you know, really tightens up and becomes powerful again, they might come back. There's thoughts that Britain and France might try and set up colonies in these areas, okay? Um, and we're gonna talk about what that would look like. So, or sorry, why that wouldn't be necessarily a good thing for America. Uh, that's really why we're even talking about this. It's something called the Monroe Doctrine, which you'll learn about in a second. 